In physics, specifically electromagnetism, the Biot-Savart law is an equation describing the magnetic field generated by an electric current. It relates the magnetic field to the magnitude, direction, length, and proximity of the electric current. The law is valid in the magnetostatic approximation, and is consistent with both Ampere's circuital law and Gauss's law for magnetism. It is named after Jean-Baptiste Biot and Félix Savart who discovered this relationship in 1820. Equation. Electric currents The Biot-Savart law is used for computing the resultant magnetic field B at position R generated by a steady current I, a continual flow of charges which is constant in time and the charge neither accumulates nor depletes at any point. The law is a physical example of a line integral being evaluated over the path C in which the electric currents flow. The equation in SI units is where is a vector whose magnitude is the length of the differential element of the wire in the direction of conventional current. The full displacement vector from the wire element and mu0 is the magnetic constant. Alternatively, where is the unit vector of the symbols in bold face denote vector quantities. The integral is usually around a closed curve, since electric currents can only flow around closed paths. An infinitely long wire is a counterexample. To apply the equation, the point in space where the magnetic field is to be calculated is arbitrarily chosen. The formulations given above work well when the current can be approximated as running through an infinitely narrow wire. If the conductor has some thickness, the proper formulation of the Biot-Savart law is, or, alternatively, where is the volume element and is the current density vector in that volume. The Biot-Savart law is fundamental to magnetostatics, playing a similar role to Coulomb's law in electrostatics. When magnetostatics does not apply, the Biot-Savart law should be replaced by Jeff Amenko's equations. Constant uniform current in the special case of a steady constant current I, the magnetic field is IE. The current can be taken out of the integral. Point charge at constant velocity in the case of a point charged particle Q moving at a constant velocity V. Maxwell's equations give the following expression for the electric field and magnetic field. Where is the unit vector pointing from the current position of the particle to the point at which the field is being measured? And theta is the angle between in when V2C2. The electric field and magnetic field can be approximated as these equations are called the Biot-Savart law for a point charge due to its closely analogous form to the standard Biot-Savart law given previously. These equations were first derived by Oliver Heaviside in 1888. Magnetic Responses Applications the Biot-Savart law can be used in the calculation of magnetic responses even at the atomic or molecular level, e.g., chemical shieldings or magnetic susceptibilities, provided that the current density can be obtained from a quantum mechanical calculation or theory. Aerodynamics Applications the Biot-Savart law is also used in aerodynamic theory to calculate the velocity induced by vortex lines. In the aerodynamic application, the roles of vorticity and current are reversed in comparison to the magnetic application. In Maxwell's 1861 paper on physical lines of force, magnetic field strength H was directly equated with pure vorticity whereas B was a weighted vorticity that was weighted for the density of the vortex C. Maxwell considered magnetic permeability μ to be a measure of the density of the vortex C. Hence the relationship magnetic induction current was essentially a rotational analogy to the linear electric current relationship. Electric convection current where Rho is electric charge density. B was seen as a kind of magnetic current of vortices aligned in their axial planes, with H being the circumferential velocity of the vortices. The electric current equation can be viewed as a convective current of electric charge that involves linear motion. 
by analogy. The magnetic equation is an inductive current involving spin. There is no linear motion in the inductive current along the direction of the B vector. The magnetic inductive current represents lines of force. In particular, it represents lines of inverse square law force. In aerodynamics the induced air currents are forming solenoidal rings around a vortex axis that is playing the role that electric current plays in magnetism. This puts the air currents of aerodynamics into the equivalent role of the magnetic induction vector B in electromagnetism. In electromagnetism the B lines form solenoidal rings around the source electric current, whereas in aerodynamics, the air currents form solenoidal rings around the source vortex axis. Hence in electromagnetism, the vortex plays the role of effect, whereas in aerodynamics, the vortex plays the role of cause. Yet when we look at the B lines in isolation, we see exactly the aerodynamic scenario in so much as that B is the vortex axis and H is the circumferential velocity as in Maxwell's 1861 paper. In two dimensions, for a vortex line of infinite length, the induced velocity at her point is given by where gamma is the strength of the vortex and r is the perpendicular distance between the point and the vortex line. This is a limiting case of the formula for vortex segments of finite length, where a and b are the angles between the line and the two ends of the segment. The biot savart law, Ampere's circuital law, and Gauss's law for magnetism. In a magnetostatic situation, the magnetic field B as calculated from the biot savart law will always satisfy Gauss's law for magnetism and Ampere's law. In a non-magnetostatic situation, the biot savart law ceases to be true, while Gauss's law for magnetism and the Maxwell-Ampere law are still true.